Okay. So take two. <laughs> All right, welcome to the February uh, 2019 meeting of the Finance Committee. Um, some of us are gathered up uh, down in New York City. Others are up in Albany. Um, first up, uh, the adoption of the meeting minutes from the January meeting of the Finance Committee. They're behind tab two. Um, everybody's had a chance to review them. Can I please get a, a motion to approve those meeting minutes from the uh, January uh, Finance Committee meeting? Thank you. I move. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Second. Thank you. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. Um, we're going to actually have a pretty busy calendar today, which is exciting. Um, the six um, uh, transactions to be reviewed. First up is behind tab four, um, Catholic Health Systems Obligated Group up in Buffalo, and uh, Andy um, and Gerard will be presenting uh, this uh, jointly. I don't know who goes first, but I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll go first. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the transaction summary and staff report provided to the members seeking authorization for a resolution to receive the Catholic Health System Obligated Group. We're seeking authorization for fixed and variable rate bonds, tax exempt and or taxable bonds, with maturities not to exceed 30 years, uh, sold at one or more times through a negotiated offering and or a private placement. Uh, we're seeking authorization uh, not to exceed $220 million. Security on this transaction there will be an amended and restated, amended and restated master trust indenture, which will be a joint and several obligation of each member of the obligated group. The expected ratings are B AA one by Moody's and triple B plus from S and P. Uh, the system and their FA have presented a thoughtful plan of finance, which includes uh, includes fixed rate bonds. Uh, the fixed rate bonds will refund the currently outstanding. 2006 A through D and 2008 uh, variable rate bonds. The variable rate debt being refunded with fixed rate debt will be reamortized to realign useful lives of the assets and has a one year extension from 2034 to 2035. We're also issuing uh, fixed rate new money bonds uh, for projects in the amount of approximately $100 million. Uh, the significant projects are a um, electronic health records or electronic medical records project of $135 million, which is system wide at a CHS. $63 million of that will be funded with bond proceeds, and the balance will be funded with equity. Uh, Mercy Hospital has some uh, renovations and expansions to their operating room, their sterile processing department, and cath lab. And there are various other projects across, system, uh, across the system that will take place as well. In addition, we'll be uh, issuing variable rate bonds. Uh, those will be new money variable rate bonds. And we will be able to push out the amortization on those bonds to um, you know, get more useful life out of them. So overall, the uh, intent here is to restructure the overall debt service, to create level debt service, and eliminate the currently front-loaded debt service, which they're having some challenges with. Uh, the refunding is not expected to produce savings by restructuring the variable rate bonds and laying on top the fixed rate bonds, the system will receive an estimated cost of capital uh, as provided on the handout, which Andy may be referencing here, which is approximately a 50 basis point benefit. Andy, would you like to talk about that? The chart? Yeah, yeah. if you look at the yeah, if you look at the handout. The top part of the chart represents that if the system just issued the new money and didn't do the restructuring, you can see that the maximum annual debt service under that scenario is roughly $28.7 million. By implementing their plan and leveling out their system-wide level debt service, you can see that their MADS decreases by approximately $5 million, which obviously is beneficial to the system. It positions them for any future endeavors or any future capital plans they have, and this will be looked at favorably by the rating agencies. Well, Tracy. So, so, so to be clear, uh, Andy, the the purpose here is to is to level the debt service, not not uh, 
not to generate savings. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think you know as Gerard, as Gerard had indicated, you know, this is an overall plan of finance on behalf of Catholic Health. There's a new money component, and there's a refunding component. The new money is for the the projects that are listed on the cover of the report, all of which are important and needed. Um, improvements for Catholic health. There are, you know, CON projects. Tracy can speak to that. Um, the refunding, we're refunding the 2006 and 2008 DASNI issued variable rate bonds. Those bonds will be, the, bond, the bonds to be issued to refund those bonds will be fixed rate bonds. As Gerard had indicated, um, there will be a portion of variable rate bonds that will be issued basically in the same amount of the variable rate bonds that are being refunded. So net net for the system, the variable rate bond exposure will not change. Um, in doing this combination, in, in doing this financing in combination, we do have the opportunity here to assist Catholic Health to achieve system-wide level debt service obviously consistent with tax law, consistent with uh, useful life of the assets. And as Gerard had indicated, net-net at the end of the day, um, we're able to achieve a debt structure that is more favorable to Catholic health as, you know, depicted in the chart and as explained by Andy earlier. Thank you, Portia. Thank you, Portia. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if I could yeah. add, this is this is uh, Tracy Raleigh um, from the Health Department. I don't know if you can hear me okay. I'll first ask that We're question. good, Tracy. Okay, great. So I did um, provide a memo in support of this financing. Yep. I don't know if members, it was, uh, I believe, mailed out yesterday. And, you know, I won't, a lot of what's been stated I don't want to repeat, but I will say from the department's perspective that the, the Catholic health system uh, is a an integrated delivery system in Western New York. Um, by that, I mean it is a system that uh, is composed of uh, four hospitals. In addition, it has a relatively robust continuum of long-term care services. In addition, it has a relatively really, uh, well-structured partnership with physician groups uh, called the Catholic uh, Medical Partners, which, which functions together with the hospitals and the other uh, uh, facilities in the network uh, to take on risk-based contracts with payers, which ultimately um, you know, drive at producing value to, to consumers. So that's looked on favorably uh, by the department. From a market perspective, um, there are two, two systems in Western New York. The Catholic Health System is one, and uh, Kaleida Health is another. And uh, Catholic Health System um, has had a slight market lead position. Um, the way the department looks at this financing is um, is really uh, on a forward-looking basis for the system. Um, we believe that uh, this is not, uh, as stated, a refunding that is being done to generate savings. Rather, it's to position the entity um, for future strategic capital that it might have to bring on later on as a system. It helps to look at the debt profile uh, across the system in totality and achieve an aggregate system level debt service. Um, and by that, you know, as discussed, um, it, it actually raises new money, which, which was discussed um, approximately 147 million of new money for strategic capital the electronic health system being the, the, the bulk of it. Um, it. So it brings on that new money, levels the debt service, and actually lowers the maximum annual debt service uh, for the system, and actually achieves a lower overall weighted cost of capital. So, you know, we believe that this uh, financing um, 
will will position the the health system for the future and actually strengthen the credit from a rating agency perspective. Now, I will say that we we have said in the memo that um, you know in in conjunction with our uh, understanding with. DASNI, prior to the mailing of the official statement, we do have uh, a couple of uh, checks that we uh, we need to make on the financing, one of which will be, you know, the sign-off of, of the due diligence on the tax basis of, um, you know, the economic life of the assets meeting the term of the bonds. Um, the second being the proposal does uh, anticipate the uh, the additional members being added to the obligated group and that's stated you know both in my memo in the staff report um, we we have a, a bit more uh, due diligence on that um, I think there are there are three members that are being proposed to be added for which no additional action is required um, that is Mount St. Mary's Hospital and two of the home care agencies um, but the others being added, while we understand the rationale, we still have a, a, a little more due diligence to do on that. Um, but overall, you know, we are recommending approval for this resolution to proceed, you know, based on the factors that I that I just outlined. Thank you very much, Tracy. I just had one question, just on the memo, the the um, the new improvements, the new money that will be used to build these properties. The Department of Health has sort of looked at the underlying projects and it's consistent with the goals of the department, I'm assuming? Yes, so those, you know, we, we've, um, all, of the, all of the projects that require a certificate of need have been contingently approved. Um, okay. And we've, we've, you know, reconciled that with the, the DASME staff. Yeah. Okay. And I will Thank add you. that they, you know, as as stated, you know, the 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 EHR system is is a significant uh, investment. Um, as stated, you know, the the system uh, actually did a thoughtful RFP, selected a vendor. Um, it is a vendor the department's, you know, very much familiar with. Um, uh, in addition, you know, so that so that investment coupled with the investments at um, uh, both um, Mercy and Sisters of Charity, those investments are, as the department's understanding, are are um, really driven at producing additional revenues and efficiencies for the system. Thank you. No, it sounds like a uh, a good project overall. I had a quick question on the, on the more those first mortgages, or do we know the security? The obligated group secured by mortgages on real property and a pledge of gross receipts. I'm just. Okay. I just want to, you know, the security, just, I'm presuming it's fairly sufficient for the amount of the offering. I do just want to point out again, though, as you can tell, we work very closely with the Department of Health collaborating yes. on this. Uh, project and uh, we greatly appreciate your uh, help, uh, John and Tracy. Um, uh, one other point, or two other points, I guess I wanted to touch, touch base on was um, there. You know, there is expected to be an amended and restated master trust indenture uh, that will be market driven. Um, so the MTI is expected to relieve certain covenant constraints for the hospital or the system. Um, this sort of fits in very nicely to the one Des Desney um, plan. And uh, in addition to this. Uh, this is an, an important transaction to us because we're bringing this uh, hospital back into our portfolio. They had started issuing away from us through the LDC or what have you, but uh, you know, I think as some right. efforts that have been made at DASNY, uh, it turns out that uh, you know they have elected to come back to DASNY, and I think that's a plus. Mm -hmm. And we welcome them back as a client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Perhaps we can do some of their construction work while we're well. up there. <laughs> See how that works out later on. Anyway. Any other uh, comments or concerns or questions, Mr. Chair, well, one, Mr. One Johnson? Question. Um, uh, we talked briefly about uh, the huge unfunded pension liability that these folks have. Um, they were able to pay $33 million of it in 2017, which is approximately a tenth of what's outstanding. I'm, yes. I'm wondering whether they're, obviously they're trying to pay this, they're trying to catch up. 
Yes. And have, have you had a chance to find out what their plans are going forward? I did. Uh, I, I checked in with the uh, hospital today, and uh, they have a plan to be 80% funded by 2026. So they have been really? moving aggressively, yes, towards this, and uh, so they do have a plan. And 2026 is their, uh, the point where they expect to be 80% funded. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? Uh, none here. Mr. Johnson, anything? No. Okay, well, hearing none, um, can I please get a, a motion to recommend approval of this offering um, at tomorrow's uh, board meeting? Thank you. I got one from Health. Thank you. Second. Uh, Mr. Just Chair? Just second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. That motion carries, and run to Buffalo. Right. What's next? Up, uh, I'm on the east. Exactly. Tab five. Andy, you're back up on the Money's no. Medical Center in Brooklyn. Right. Gerard. 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 Oh, I, I got both of you again. I'm sorry, Gerard. Oh, that's quite all right. No problem. Missed <laughs> up. Mr. Chairman, uh, the transaction summary and staff report provided to members seeking authorization for resolution to proceed from a Monarchy's Medical Center. Um, we're seeking authorization for fixed and or variable rate bonds, tax exempt and or taxable, with maturities not to exceed 40 years, sold at one or more times through a negotiated offering and a private placement. We are requesting an amount not to exceed 165 million. Uh, these are money hospital, this is a money hospital transaction, financing two CONs, and uh, some a few non-CON projects. Uh, the significant CON projects are the construction and renovation of the emergency department, including invasive car cardiology and neonatology services, of about $114 million, and also the renovation of a cardiothoracic intensive care unit, um, phase two of that project, which is in the $12 million range. There are some non-CON projects of about $31 million that include the modernization of information systems, movable medical equipment, and various infrastructure projects. Uh, the security features for the tax-exempt uh, proposal would be FHA mortgage insurance, a pledge of payments under the mortgage note, a one-year debt service reserve fund, mortgages on real property acceptable to FHA, and a letter of credits plug holes in the cash flows and a mortgage reserve fund. The expected rating would be double A2 or double A, excuse me, double A2 from Moody's and double A uh, from S&P. The taxable option would involve have securities of uh, Ginny Mae securities. The expected ratings would be triple A or double A uh, for Moody's and double A plus for S&P. Currently, Maimonides has no debt with uh, the dormitory authority. Uh, previously, they've issued three uh, series of bonds with us up through 2004. Uh, in 2013, they refunded the DASNY debt with uh, taxable Ginny May debt. So Maimonides, a valued client, is returning to DASNY, uh, DASNY's portfolio with this transaction. Um, since they have an outstanding debt with HUD, uh, they're limited as to their financing opportunities uh, that's why there is the, the FHA uh, tax exempt or Ginnie Mae tax taxable. Uh, um, one note, uh, you know, we've talked on some other transactions where we've had clients trying to get out of the FHA portfolio because it is a costly uh, process. So uh, I just wanted to mention uh, on the cost of issuance uh, sources and uses, there is a, a pretty weighty number there, uh, $8.2 million. Uh, that's an example of some of the costly FHA uh, expenses. There is a three-year um, uh, pre insurance uh, premium requirement uh, that's in the range of $2.8 million. There's also uh, AMPO, which is Allowance to Make Project Operational, which is another $2.8 million. So uh, that's a part of what consists, that number consists of. Uh, some positives, uh, Maimonides has always uh, made debt service payments timely. Uh, Maimonides Medical Center is currently in a clinical affiliation with collaboration agreement with Northwell Health System. Uh, they are nationally recognized and accredited centers of excellence, including uh, Heart and Vascular Center, the Outpatient Breast Center and Cancer Center, and the Stroke Center. 
staff recommends the board adopt a resolution and proceed for a 40-year bond issue in an amount not to exceed $165 million. On behalf of Monty's Medical Center. Thank you. Andy, you need to? No, I'm just here for support. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Tracy, I see another memo from the uh, Department of Health. Yeah, thank you. So I, I will just, you know, uh, note, um, as Gerard stated, you know, certainly Maimonides is a is a essential and critical provider in Brooklyn. Um, in addition to what Gerard said, uh, they are uh, uh, what we call a performing provider system in the, in the dish rip world. So they they were the main uh, uh, provider that was uh, collaborating on projects in relation to uh, dish rip funds, um, and they've been a leader in that regard. The, the projects that they're funding with respect to this financing um, through FHA are part of a master facility plan. Um, anyone who has visited the Maimonides emergency room would, would echo you know, that the, the criticality of the capital improvements uh, needed, um, they see a, a, a tremendous amount of volume and um, the, the, the space has um, significantly outgrown that. And so that investment is, is really anticipated to um, provide them the throughput they need uh, to, treat, to treat the patients that they serve. Um, in addition, the other strategic investment um, in, in cardiology services and um, the NICU and surgical services are really made in conjunction with Northwell, who um, has been, as Gerard said, there is a clinical relationship, and um, it, collectively, you know, those investments are geared at um, uh, both serving the need of the patients in the community, but also um, services that will help to improve um, the sustainability of Maimonides. And I think if that is what um, you know Northwell is is looking. At, in addition, as it considers further steps in in, uh, in in their in their relationship, so the department has reviewed the uh, certificate of needs uh, that that accompany these critical capital projects, and those have been contingently approved. And um, as noted, um, you know, in working with DASNI, we will be looking that any contingencies would be satisfied prior to the mailing of the official statement. So uh, we are uh, recommending approval of, of the resolution to proceed. Thank you very much, Tracy. Tracy, in, in the absence of the uh, Northwell affiliation, would health be concerned with the uh, gradually deteriorating uh, day's cash on hand from 2013 to 2017? I, I assume that with the Northwell affiliation, we're not concerned about that, assuming that that is completed, but in in the absence of it, would there have been some concern about that? It's in uh, it's but, in table four. Um, no, I, four, no, I, yeah, I, no, I see that. Yes, I I think the there is no we don't have Maimonides uh, in an immediate concern of not being able to meet its obligations. I believe that the the uh, the relationship with Northwell is is really meant to help ensure a longer term sustainability. Um, sure. And so I think the, you know, in addition to these capital improvements, Northwell is working with Maimonides management and has actually provided um, uh, operating resources in terms of labor okay. to help with operating efficiencies to help improve the margin and ultimately the sustainability. But the capital here goes hand in hand with those operational improvements, all meant to drive increased margin and increased liquidity. Thank you. And their assets are appreciated. Hmm? Their assets are appreciated. Right. Yeah, appreciated. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, for the record, uh, would somebody take a second and just define the cushion ratio? Yes. 
cushion ratio. It has its own independent footnote, too. I saw that. Yes, it, it's the uh, unrestricted cash plus short-term investments um, over the current debt and interest expense. Say that again? And it, it's intended to measure the ability of cash to meet debt obligations. Okay, so that's, that's why it's there. Yes. Now, say it again for me, just so I... Unrestricted cash and short-term investments divided by the current debt and the uh, interest expense. Okay. So it's current debt and interest expense that forms the, the uh, denominator. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you said that. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Joy. Sounds like a good thing to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have one of those in my house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, my wife will call on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, though. Thank you. Not that you didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's real. It's 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 just crazy. It's really it's really liquid 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 cash. Yeah. No available cash okay. to meet that service. Yeah. So. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I just I just never seen it before. Yeah. Thank you, Al. It's a liquid um, asset, so for current liability. Any other concerns or questions? Oh, sir. None. None here. No, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Okay. Hearing none, can I please get a motion to uh, recommend approval? Of this at tomorrow's full board meeting. I, I move approval. Thank you. A <laughs> second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Now we're going to go up to Rockefeller University. Going to go uptown from Brooklyn. We'll go up a little north. And that's going to be Dave. Where's Dave? Right here. Dave. <laughs> I'm looking here. I see him moving here. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> too much going on. Right. <laughs> too much looking at the screen. Too much TV. What do you do when you're running the meeting? Though? You just lose um, the, uh, the finance committee uh, is being asked to recommend to the full board a resolution to proceed for one or more series of tax exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds in an amount not to exceed $310 million, with maturities not to exceed 40 years on behalf of the Rockefeller University. Uh, proceeds from this issuance will be used for both new money and refunding purposes. Uh, as far as the money portion, uh, proceeds will be used to reimburse Rockefeller for costs associated with the construction of the Stavros Niarchos Foundation David Rockefeller River Campus, which is just referred to as the River mm -hmm. Campus, uh, which will add two acres and several buildings to the university's existing 14-acre campus. Uh, that new money portion is expected to be right around $9 million. Um, construction of the River Campus began back in fall of 2015 and is expected to be completed in the spring of this year. Uh, that project has been financed to date with a number of large donations as well as 100 million proceeds and bonds issued by DASNY back in 2015. Uh, proceeds will also be used to refund all or a portion of the Rockefeller Series 2009A, 2009C, and 2010A bonds. Uh, the refunding of those bonds will likely occur at different times with the 2009A and 2009C bonds, which will be callable on April 1st, being issued with the new money portion, and then the uh, refunding of the 2010A bonds coming at a later date. Those bonds uh, will be currently callable on April 1st of next year. Uh, so assuming current market conditions, the total net present value savings in the range of $11.2 million or 7% of the refunded bonds is expected just from the refund of the 2009A and C bonds. Um, <clears throat> Moody says uh, rated the university AA1 uh, with a stable outlook. S&P uh, recently um, changed the rating on the university from AA plus to AA. Uh, you'll see on the report we had it listed as AA plus. The S&P report came out um, shortly after we mailed uh, to the board, so I just want to point out that rating changed. Um, really what it boiled down to is when um, S&P issued their rating, they factored in the $90 million of new debt, and essentially um, they felt like that with the additional debt, it was more in the line of the AA rating. So nothing significant there, uh, just factoring the new money um, portion of this issuance. Um, with those ratings, the university, as, as they have with the previous bond issuances, will be, uh, the loan agreement will be a general obligation of the university. Um, as far as additional information, I know the, the members are pretty familiar with Rockefeller, so I won't spend too much time here, but um, you know, Rockefeller is unique in that they don't charge 
tuition to their graduate students, so their revenues really boil down to uh, government grants, investment in and fundraising. And uh, you know, when you look at the government grants, it's averaged 84 million over the past five years. That's been fairly stable, and the bulk of that comes from the uh, National Institute of Health funding, which is approximately 85 percent of that number. Wow. Um, fundraising has. Um, Increased each year, reaching a five-year high of 23.4 million in 2018. So that number has uh, also been improving. And as you can see, the financial resource base has grown, you know, made due to those factors. And it's reached 2.7 billion uh, for uh, fiscal year end uh, 2018. Mr. Chairman, thank you. What is there to say? I'm really pleased that we've got uh, the Rockefeller University in our portfolio of clients. Yes. Very, very pleased. A nice, uh, nice client. Yeah. I always look, though, for Sandra. It's a present value savings, and taking a substantial <laughs> portion of it in this year. I just, it's okay. Um, any concerns, questions? Hearing none? None here. Yeah. Um, Good, okay. Can I get a motion to recommend approval at tomorrow's full board meeting? Thank you. I move approval. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. That carries. Thanks very much. Um, up next, Terrence Cardinal Cook Health Center. And Steve is going to present. Steve is there on the corner. <laughs> again, I'm. <laughs> but if you look at it, you think it's. <laughs> Just throws you off. <laughs> That's Steve. I'm sorry. The finance committee is being asked to recommend to the full board the adoption of a resolution to proceed for fixed and or variable rate tax exempt and or taxable bonds with a not to exceed amount of fifty million dollars to be sold through a private placement issued at one or more times on behalf of Terrence Cardinal Cook Healthcare Center. This will be the institution's <coughs> second DASNY bond issuance. Terrence Cardinal Cook also issued bonds in 1998, which defeased in 2014. Terrence Cardinal Cook is a not-for-profit corporation in New York City, which operates an Article 28 facility licensed by the Department of Health, as well as an Article 16 program under New York's mental hygiene law, which is licensed by the Office for People with Developmental Disabilities. The institution is a member of the Catholic Healthcare System, also known as ArchCare. ArchCare operates five skilled nursing facilities, as well as programs at Calvary Hospital and many home-based and community programs. ArchCare has been managing Terrence Cardinal Cook since two, 2004. Terrence Cardinal Cook provides a comprehensive range of services, which is unique for healthcare service providers in New York State. Mm -hmm. The 559 beds licensed by the Department of Health include a 57-bed residential dialysis unit, a 48-bed neurodegenerative disease unit, and a 156-bed HIV AIDS unit. The institution also operates a 56-bed specialty hospital for children and young adults with profound neurological impairments and other complex medical conditions. The specialty hospital is the Article 16 facility, which is licensed by OPWDD. Approximately $20 million of the proposed bond issue will be used to finance the costs associated with expanding and relocating <coughs> the specialty hospital amongst the campus. So the specialty hospital has been approved by OPWDD to expand to 72 beds, and there will be a prior property approval, or PPA, for this portion of the project. The PPA will provide the commitment by OPWDD to reimburse the institution for all principal and interests associated with this portion of the project. In addition to the expansion and re relocation of the specialty hospital, Terrence Cardinal Cook will also be financing various upgrades and deferred maintenance pro projects across its campus, including replacing and re relocating a kitchen, installing a new generator, upgrading elevators, and updating its fire systems. These are all considered notice projects with the Department of Health and do not require a certificate of need. The bonds are expected to be privately placed to Sterling National Bank, a qualified institutional buyer. The bonds will be drawdown bonds with variable, a variable rate during the drawdown period up to three years and then convert to a fixed rate. The purchaser will have a 10-year hold period upon conversion for a total hold, hold period of up to 13 years from closing. The principal will amortize over a period of 25 years upon conversion to the fixed rate. The purchaser has agreed to accommodate two closings, with the first closing expected to be this spring and the second closing expected to occur 
in December of this year. That's really just to allow them to start some of the projects that are ready now as soon as uh, everything occurs and then uh, be able to draw down the project costs over a longer period of time under tax law. Security as required by the purchaser is expected to include a mortgage, a pledge of revenues, and a pledge of assets. And they're also expected to be financial covenants required by the purchaser. Overall, the institution has had occupancy of approximately 96% recent years. The specialty hospital has been operating at capacity and there is a waiting list for these services. <clears throat> While the institution operates with a working capital deficiency, our care provides financial support to Terrence Cardinal Cook as necessary. As of December 31st, 2017, Arch Cares Foundation had $37 million of cash investments and 747000 of total liabilities. Terrence Cardinal Cook's operating gain or loss has fluctuated in recent years, ranging from a low of negative 2.8% to a high of positive 1.6%. And as of December 31st, 2017, Terrence Cardinal Cook has net assets of approximately $9.5 million. And in closing, I also wanted to notify the committee that uh, DASNY is providing additional services for the project beyond the financing. Prior to the issuance of the PPA for the specialty hospital, OPWDD is requiring architectural cost and quality reviews of the design for appropriateness. These are reviews that OPWDD typically does, however, for a complex project of the, the nature of the specialty hospital, they don't have the in-house expertise to do this review. So DASNY is going to conduct those reviews uh, on behalf of OPWD and that those reviews are underway and should be completed shortly. I just wanted to point this out as another way that DASNY's finance team is working with the construction division um, to provide additional services. Exciting to hear. Great and the specialty hospital is, I think, I read the only type of this facility in New York State, right? This, that's right. my understanding. Yeah. Very, they're very high need um, children. Yeah, I've read it. Right, right. Long, uh, length long of term on these days. Yep. I can add something. Hi, um, I'm Nelly, and I should say we're meaning in a human resource benefit uh, perspective. Um, just to add some clarification, there is a reasonable accommodation component specifically for. Um, uh, approval with uh, OPWDD. So when they refer to the construction, it has to meet the ADA requirement mm -hmm. um, specifically for every uh, unit, which is considered uh, the dormitory is done on, on a household unit of one room. So uh, and, and this is very specific to uh, any time that. This that your um, that is going through uh, it has to have that reasonable accommodation and ADA, which is not uh, such a hard stop with construction projects and any no. other. Uh, but it is the one of the it, it is a criteria that uh, is used to evaluate business and 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 it, on, on their end. So if mm -hmm. if the Building doesn't comply with that, then they can't uh, use it. If that makes if that makes a sense, to so just kind of put it in that. So uh, we we can't hear. Yeah, we're we're not we're having trouble. Thank you. We can't hear. So <laughs> basically, I think that she was or the lady. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Um, was just commenting on the need to have a real detailed analysis performed during the architectural services to make sure that certain um, issues relating to, uh, I guess, the Rehab Act of 74 and, and the, reasonable the, ADA, the, ADA, the ADA, the ADA and the Rehab Act of 74. I think a hard stop with that. So. And it, it absolutely is a hard stop so. with our you know, review design team, with the review team. Sure. extensively with OPWDD and our facilities throughout the state. So. Yeah. Why? Well, thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure we'll make note to our construction review team. Damn right. But, <laughs> um, I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> good, good. Anyway, but thank you for your comment. Um,
Were there any other concerns or comments? Mr. Johnson, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chief? I'm hearing none. I think it would be a uh, pleasure to uh, recommend approval of this offering, given the... Uh, so moved. Thank you. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. And thank you again for the uh, the connection between construction and um, financing. Sure. I think that's the second one we heard today, and hopefully we'll continue. Good. Um, <clears throat> what do I got? I have a TELP coming telp. up? Mm -hmm. yep. A TELP. SUNY. Good old TELP. Okay. <laughs> SUNY Syracuse. Yep. SUNY University Hospital at Syracuse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Behind tab eight is a TELP financing on behalf of SUNY University Hospital at Syracuse in an amount not to exceed $23.2 million. Um, as you know, it's the policy of Public Authorities Control Board that financings um, which exceed $10 million uh, in a 12-month period come before both this board and PACB for approval. There is an attached equipment list that details out the various equipment, including nursing, IT, perioperative services equipment, and other equipment. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And this is SUNY, right? It's, is it mm -hmm. not part of Syracuse University? It's a mm -hmm. SUNY, SUNY University. It just happens to be in Syracuse. Correct. SUNY University. Got it. Okay. Um, any questions, concerns? None. Hearing none, can I please get a motion to recommend approval of this at help offering at tomorrow's full board meeting. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Thank you very much. That carries. What's up? We got another help? Mm -hmm. At least. Outstanding. <laughs> Behind nine. Okay, Portia, take us away. United Health. Behind tab Please. nine is uh, another TELP financing, this one on behalf of United Health Services Hospitals, Inc., in the amount of 10.066, not an amount not to exceed 10.066 million. Again, it's the policy of Public Authorities Control Board that financings which exceed $10 million in 12 month period be brought before both this board and PACB for approval. There's an attached equipment list detailing various equipment, including OR, radiology, IT, and other equipment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Portia, as always. Any questions, concerns? Hearing none, can I please get a motion to recommend approval of this TELP at tomorrow's full board meeting? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Tracy. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Anything else for the agenda? Anybody else have any comments, concerns? What thing comes to mind just specifically sure. with um, SUNY University of Syracuse? Uh, are they, because, are, would they be integrated as far as the electronic uh, record keeping with Western New York and Downstate? Because they're at a critical, um, I, just the communications with those, you know, because of where it is, uh, it's just something that I, it, it just came um, to mind. And if that, is that part of? Well, what we really, well, Portia, you could take away the TELP if you, I mean, we really just deal with the, uh, the financing. Right. 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 What is what is the plan? Exactly. You're asking a question about the plan and, and the integration with other SUNY schools. Uh, and so and, and electronic I record, record sure. keeping because uh, I, I mean, last I was away, downstate, Western New York, you know, as you mentioned earlier, uh, they're still implementing, you know, having more comprehensive EHR and you know, Syracuse's. Mm -hmm. In between, so I, I right. that might be something more for SUNY and their board, I would right. guess. Right. It's, it's SUNY. Oh. Just, we just really just on this specific stuff. We're right. just doing the sort of the financing, I, but we get it. Right. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you. Um, and I guess we could make a referral just to comment to SUNY and ask them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I found just in actually practicing day to day, sometimes even if it just comes to mind and you don't, that uh, it helps kind of move along things because sometimes you don't know on the finance side why something is taking longer than the anticipated date or just things to kind of keep in mind with. Uh, the way that things are actually laid out on the uh, on on the ground, because Western New York has always been traditionally its own medical and uh, expanding. Mm -hmm. They have kind of been growing out. New York City and Syracuse uh, is different than Albany, and 
it's always been to move, streamline uh, everything to kind of get everyone on one comprehensive electronic record keeping uh, because of no. cause of you know, right. You're very, kind, the you're very kind to point these things out, and, I, and, and I, yeah. it's probably not the province of this committee. Um, right, but, I, I but would, I, this is, yeah, I'm sorry, Al. Tracy, some health, yeah. Yeah, Tracy. Sorry, Trace. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, Al. I was going to say exactly that. I think this is Tracy Raleigh from the Department, Al. I think the speaker, I'm having trouble <laughs> hearing, but I think is referencing the organization of the medical school and comparing how it's organized in Western New York as compared to, you know, uh, uh, Suit the Sunnis, which have an, an actual direct affiliation with the the, the hospitals. Um, I think it was like sharing the record keeping. I think was the point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So, so you know, yeah. <coughs> I think I think I agree. We, you know, this transaction is really the, the financing, and um, but we can we can certainly try to answer the question. You know, that flag it back to Sunni for appropriate response. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Trace. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Hearing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Today's so moved, sir. Meeting. So second. moved. Thank you, Mr. Well, you're not, you can't do that, Mr. Johnson. No, Tracy has second that. Thank you, Tracy. Second. All in favor, yes. aye. Any opposed? Aye, aye. There will be none. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm not opposed. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> keep this going, though? Thank you very much, and we'll see everyone at tomorrow's uh, board meeting. Thank you very much. Great.